Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the ultimate guide to mortgages, AKA Mortgages 101. So a home mortgage or a primary residence mortgage is typically the longest and the largest loan that most people take out throughout their entire lives. A lot of people have basic understanding of what goes into a mortgage, but the more and more I interact with people on social media in my DMs or just on Twitter, for example, I can start to see that they don't really understand the entire inner workings of a mortgage. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the four factors that go into a mortgage payment. We're gonna talk about the different types of mortgage products out there. That way it can best suit your needs to know that you're getting into the best product possible. Uh, I'm gonna take you through a live demo of my own home affordability spreadsheet. That way we can mess around with the house price, uh, the down payment amount, the insurance, the taxes, all that good stuff. And I'm also going to take you through a live demo of an actual amortization schedule between a 15 and a 30 year mortgage. Let's get into it. Okay, so very quickly, let's run through the four factors that go into a mortgage payment. If you understand the acronym of PITI, that simply stands for principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. If you're a real estate investor, you know these four letters like the back of your hand. If you don't, let's run through these very quickly. So P stands for principal. This is simply just the amount of money that you owe the bank for lending you to be able to purchase the house that you're moving into, okay? So the example that we're gonna be using for this video is a $350,000 house and we're gonna be putting 20% down. So in the comment section below, uh, tell me what the down payment amount is if we're putting down 20% on 350 and what is the mortgage amount going to be? You can pause the video here. Okay, so if you answered $70,000 for the down payment and you owe 280 on the mortgage, that is the correct answer. So moving on, what is interest? Interest is simply just the rate at which you are borrowing the money from the bank. You're paying the bank to borrow their money. That is how the bank is compensated, okay? So the higher risk you are, meaning the lower credit score you are, the higher the rate that the bank needs to make in order to compensate themselves for taking on risk, AKA you're going to get a higher interest rate on your mortgage. So higher risk, higher rate, lower risk, lower rate. The better your credit, the lower this interest is gonna be. So I'll show you how the affecting the interest numbers actually affects you in the long term in my spreadsheet later in this video. T is taxes, this is a no brainer. So property taxes are used to help fund schools, infrastructure, government workers, things like that. That is why property taxes are a part of owning a home. So these taxes are typically calculated on the assessed value of the home and the lender can actually roll these into your mortgage payment. They're gonna be escrowed, meaning they're gonna be set aside in a special account, and once they're due, typically twice a year, that's going to be paid to the municipality that they're owed. So this taxes will actually get rolled into your mortgage payment in most cases. And then finally, we have insurance. So insurance sounds just like what it is. Uh, property insurance is if you know a tree falls on your house, it's just like car insurance. You're gonna get compensated after some sort of deductible, okay? And you pay for it monthly, typically. Um, however, there's this other thing down here called PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. So typically, if you put less than 20% down on a property, PMI, private mortgage insurance, is typically there to allow the lender uh, to get some um, breathing room, if you will. This doesn't go towards the principal, of your payment, it just allows the bank to be able to turn your property into a security and sell that mortgage to other bigger banks. Uh, and it also gives them a little bit less risk for taking on that mortgage if you don't have 20% down. Some cases, uh, lenders will allow you to put less money down with no PMI, which we'll get into right now. Okay, so we have five different types of mortgages. There actually are a few more, which I'll list at the end of this list, but these are the five most popular, starting with fixed rate mortgages. So fixed rate mortgages, I'm sure you've heard this. This is what most people think of when they hear mortgages. These can be offered typically in 10, 15, 20, or 30 year increments. The most popular obviously being the 15 and the 30, with the 30 being the most popular overall. So this interest rate never changes. So if you remember the acronym PITI, Principal Interest Taxes Insurance, the interest portion of this loan over the course of the term, it could be 10, 15, 30 years, uh, that interest rate never changes. That's why it's called fixed rate. On the other hand, you have number two, which is called the adjustable rate mortgage or an ARM. So this has a rate that's fixed for a specific period of time, 
typically the first number here, so you have five years, five years, and I'll explain that in a second here, it's fixed for a certain period of time and then it adjusts over time depending on the second number. Uh, so for example, if we look at a 5-1 arm, that means that the first five years is fixed and then it adjusts annually every year after that. So these are typically based on the uh, one-year treasury bills or LIBOR, okay? So if you don't know what LIBOR is, it's just an acronym for London Interbank, Interbank Offered Rate. Um, so if you wanna look at an example of a 5-5, five five, that's fixed for five years, and then it's also fixed for every five-year period after that. It adjusts every five years after that. So this typically benefits people that don't want to have a mortgage for long or they feel like interest rates are going to be going down. And if you've been following my channel at all at the time of this recording, you know what I, how I feel about interest rates. Number three is the FHA loan. The FHA loan is insured by the Federal Housing Administration. This allows down payments all the way down to 3.5%. So when we talked about a 20% down payment, which is the example that we're gonna use uh, in the beginning of the video and also on the computer, this actually allows you to put down 3.5%. So say for example, the house is $100,000. If you put 3.5% down on this, what is the number? Well, simple math tells you that it's 3,500 bucks and you can get into this property, okay? This is typically for people with low credit scores. Uh, you're gonna pay PMI, the private mortgage insurance that we talked about, but it's a good way for people who have the lower credit scores and not 20% down to get into their first home. So fourth is a VA mortgage. This is just basically insured by the Department of Veteran Affairs. Uh, so veteran meaning you know military, service people, that kind of a thing. The nice thing about a VA loan is that you don't have to have any down payment whatsoever. You can actually put down 0%, okay? So on a $100,000 house, you can put down zero, if that makes sense. Uh, you will have to pay a VA funding fee. Um, it changes all the time. There's a table that I can link down in the description below. Um, and there's also no PMI on this 0% down payment. So basically the VA loan is a great way to get into a home uh, with very little money down. Yes, your mortgage payment is gonna be higher, which we'll go over in the spreadsheet, um, but you have very little money out of pocket, which actually allows you to potentially invest that difference. So this is a very good loan. Uh, and then fifth, we have the USDA loan. This is actually backed by the Department of Agriculture. Yes, the, that USDA. <laughs> um, and basically this allows you to get into a home with no down payment as well. However, you are limited uh, to basically home improvement loans or purchase loans, but it has to fall within a certain income limit, certain geography limit, and then also there's a property value cap. Uh, so you can't be buying you know, mansions in the suburbs with this kind of a loan. It's typically more rural areas, okay? So this benefits people who wanna live a little bit uh, more rural and have a very little down payment out of pocket. And finally, there are two more loans that I didn't talk about just because if you need these kinds of loans, you're typically, uh, I don't wanna say well off, but you're buying you know, pretty expensive houses um, or you're very disciplined with your money and you have a lot of cash. So that is a jumbo loan and then also a interest only mortgage. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about those, feel free to Google that. But let's get into the live demo right now in the home affordability spreadsheet using our $350,000 house as an example. Okay, thanks for joining me in the second part of the video. We're gonna go through my live home affordability spreadsheet right here. Um, this spreadsheet is actually available for you to get for free through my newsletter. So if you sign up to the newsletter, it comes in 24 hours, or you can get it instantly if you become a patron. Uh, it's literally $4. It's the best $4 you'll ever spend because uh, this could potentially save you tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? Uh, so let's run through this real quick. So um, if you wanna watch the original video, Video where I use this, you can click on the link right here when you get the spreadsheet, or you can literally just refer to this video, obviously. So earlier in this video, we talked about this couple or this individual buying a $350,000 house, which you can see right here. They're putting down 20%, which results in a $70,000 down payment. Uh, that actually results in a principal loan amount or a mortgage amount of $280,000. So if you remember the acronym that we talked about with the PITI, uh, that is simply just the P in that acronym. 
So moving forward, you can see here that the interest rate that we're going to use is 2.89. Uh, and we're also going to use that on a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. Uh, so typically the most popular mortgage that is uh, used by people out there is a 30 year mortgage. And I'll play around with these numbers. so You can see how everything changes. Uh, we're going with 12 payments per year, AKA once a month, which results in a mortgage payment of $1,164. Um, the interest costs over this 30 years, which people never think about is actually $139,000. Uh, so let that sink in. If you put, if you pay the minimum amount over 30 years, your interest on this loan is going to be $139,000 resulting in a total cash outlay of $419,000, um, outside of the down payment. Okay. It's basically just the loan amount plus the interest gets you this number right here. Now, what most calculators don't take into um, calculation is that they don't ask you for the amount of taxes. So let's just take this home. Let's pretend like we're in a certain county that charges, you know, X amount of dollars. Let's just call it 6,500 per year. Now, the insurance on this house, we'll just use 1,000 as easy numbers and maybe a little bit more depending on if you live in like a flood zone or a hurricane area um, or if you're somewhere in the Midwest with tornadoes. I don't know, but we'll just use 1,000 bucks for easy numbers. This is all editable. Uh, let's assume that this house is not in an HOA. If you did have an HOA, uh, you can bump it up right here. 25 bucks a month, for example. If you're in California, uh, here's 300. I'm just going to keep it at zero right now. So now what this spits out is right here, you can see that this cell is incorporating all these numbers right here. And I'm just exploding that by double clicking it. You're getting mortgage, taxes, insurance, and an HOA monthly payment of $1,789. And I basically added $400 of utilities here. You can change that right here in the top left. You can make it 300, you can make it you know, 500, you can make it whatever you want. I just used 400 as a nice even number. And that's typically what utilities are where I live. Maybe a little bit less, but that's not the point. So anyway, this spits out two different numbers. You have everything all in right here. Uh, this is a majority of your housing costs. And then you have just the mortgage tax insurance and HOA. Now what we have over in columns uh, G through I, I actually provided three different scenarios of person one, person two, and any potential income. So if you're a single person, you basically put zero, you make 50 grand a year. This is what the numbers look like, okay? Very simple. Let's just pretend like we have a couple here um, and they both make equally $50,000 a year. This make, gives you a gross income of $100,000. This is where you can edit this if you want. The total net income, all these numbers are based on net income. This is where a lot of people get into a lot of trouble because they start uh, going off gross income, which is not correct, okay? So I basically took the gross income, multiplied it by 0.68, which you can see up here, and that is a fair estimation of taxes, you know, insurance, you know, all that stuff that comes out of your paycheck. You know, no one really makes 100% of what they um their annual salary is, okay? So if you wanna adjust that accordingly, you can do so in the top left. This results in a monthly net income based on these numbers of roughly $5,667. Now, the beauty of this is that you can actually see what percentage of the mortgage income, so you can see here with the mortgage taxes, insurance, and HOA are taking up of your net income, and then you can see the second number with the all-in number with the utilities, so you can see what pretty much your all-in housing cost is going to be in terms of monthly net income, okay? The nice thing about this is that it shows you what the monthly income is after your housing expense. So this is what these people have uh, monthly net minus the all in with the utilities. And then the, the final row down here is actually saying, okay, you make a hundred grand a year, uh, but the house costs 350. So that's 3.5 times your income. Makes sense. And now the reason I provided three different scenarios is because uh, what if you get a raise and the other person, you know, changes their career and doubles their income and you can just mess around with this, so on and so forth. The thing is, though, the reason why I'm showing you this is not to, you know, just advertise the spreadsheet. I couldn't care less about that. It's by showing you what interest rates and term and down payment does on a mortgage. So let's pretend that this is an FHA home and now we have 3.5% down. Do you see how this affects the numbers? So they put less money down, they have a higher interest cost. Uh, it's taking up a bigger, way bigger chunk of their monthly net income because they have less uh, money down and it's basically creating a um, 
less money outlay because they're only putting out 12250 but they're also paying a lot more in interest over the course of those 30 years. And this is not accounting for PMI, which you have to add a couple hundred bucks more on top of this. Now, let's take a look at someone who puts down, uh, if you want to go crazy and you have a, just a big amount of cash, you put down 50% on this home. The down payment is $175, um, but it also gets you closer to 30% all in, and you pay significantly less interest over the course of those 30 years. Let's stick with our example of 20%, and let's just turn this into a 15-year mortgage. Let's keep the interest rate the same right now. You can see that we went from $139,000 in interest all the way down to 65 just by cutting um, the payments in half. And by payments, I mean term, excuse me. If you want to make this even more realistic, a 15-year mortgage right now is trading at 2.59%, which makes this interest even cheaper. However, look at the monthly income. It went from basically in the 30s uh, to 51% of your income when you're accounting for the utilities as well, leaving you with only 2700 bucks a month to work with. So this is a pretty cool spreadsheet. Um, the reason I'm showing you this is because I just want you to actually experiment with this and see what fits within your budget. The typical rule of thumb that I like to go off of is your all-in housing payments shouldn't be any more than 30% of your net income. And when I say housing payments, I'm talking about everything. I'm not talking about just the, uh, the mortgage. I'm talking about excuse me, my hair is falling apart here. I'm talking about everything, mortgage, insurance, taxes, utilities, HOA, anything that goes towards housing should be accounted for. Now let's move on to, <clears throat> excuse me, an amortization schedule. Okay. Uh, a lot of people, they don't really understand or study these amortization charts. So the first one we're going to do is a obligation of $280,000 on a 30 year. And we're going to go with our example of 2.89%. And we're going to calculate this. So our monthly payment is right. It's 1163. You can see here when you put 20% down on 2.89, it's 1163, same number. So our chart is right over the course of 30 years or 360 months, and we owe 280 on it. Now, if you look at a 30-year mortgage, let me see if you can see this okay. Okay, it looks good. On a 30-year mortgage, you can see that a majority of your payment goes towards interest. Although your payment is $1,163, only 489 is going towards the principal, meaning you're only building equity on 489 as opposed to 1163. So why is that? It's because uh, these mortgages are front-loaded to pay more interest, especially on a longer term. And then you can see as time goes on, you can see your balance going down. The funny thing is, well, not so funny, but just the truth, is that your uh, principal payments only exceed your interest payments six years later in September of 2026. So let that sink in. You're paying more on interest all throughout the course of this loan um, for six years. Does that make sense? Now, let's see what happens if the same exact scenario goes to a 15-year mortgage. Yes, the monthly payment is going to be higher, as you can see there. However, you're paying more on principal from day one. Do you see that? So your payment is obviously higher. These two numbers equal 1918 but a majority of your payment is going towards principal as opposed to interest. So if we go six years down the road again, just to make an apples to apples comparison, let's find September right here. You can see that almost $1,500 of this $1,900 is going towards principal as opposed to interest. Now let's just get super crazy and say you took out a 10 year mortgage. Okay, at 2.89. Oh, and I apologize. I didn't change the 15 to 2.59%, which is going to make that interest uh, even smaller. Uh, so let's just call this 2.59 right now. Calculate. Boom. You can see that your payment is 2,600 right here. However, two grand is going towards principal and only 600 is going towards interest. So that's all I got for you guys today. Um, I hope you found value in the acronym of PITI. I hope you found value in understanding the different types of mortgages. And I hope you found value in my spreadsheet, which you can get down in the description below. Uh, and then also, obviously, um, the amortization schedule that I just showed you. Um, so please share the video with a friend that's in the market for a home. This is a very valuable video and it helps break down a lot of the confusion that people have with mortgages. Also share the video on social media and as always have a prosperous day, you guys. I hope to have provided value in the video. Thank you.
man, these people going broke out here, man. People taking 30 year mortgages, putting 10% down. They broke. Everybody's broke. Oh, I think this is still recording. Oops. Oops.